Why would you recommend the Intel CPU? Did you record this months ago and just upload it today? Can you really recommend 14900K with good peace in mind? That 350W power I'd draw will fry the CPU sooner or later. So it doesn't matter even when it is cheaper, it's going, going to fry itself in a matter of days or months. Your disdain for AMD K. is very off-putting. Someone hasn't been keeping up with the news about Intel. So what's going on with Intel issues, AMD drama? How much is Intel paying me to actually still make anti-AMD content? As a creator, you might have heard or seen something online that there's some instability issues with your Intel 13 and 14th gen. What can you do? What's going on? Let's talk about it. Now, most likely the comment section is going to be Intel versus AMD debate. And I don't want this video to be that because there is some issues that you really need to know right now because your CPU might, you know, be dead or going to die soon. So you might have heard about Intel's instability issues very quickly. You might have seen all the other videos. In conclusion, what's happening is Intel's having some problems with their 13th and 14th gen CPUs that are above 65 watt TDP, especially the i7s and i9s on the 14th gen, that one over there. Bear in mind, this is an unopened package that I recently planned to do a video on, but now after seeing the comments on the last video, I'm not sure you guys want to see it, but we might do the most triggering PC build ever right now. So let me know if you want to see that. So why is this instability issue occurring or why is it happening? Number one, too much voltage onto the CPU. The problem that has been there for quite a while and that kind of renders a lot of my reviews a little bit inaccurate, I'll talk about that in a minute, is that the motherboards now push the CPU above its limits what in Intel is recommending. But on the motherboard manufacturer's defense, Intel's been vague about their voltages or like recommended voltages until recently. And because motherboard manufacturers want to show that their motherboard is the best compared to the competition, they're pushing the CPU a bit further to show that, look, the CPU performs better on our motherboard, for example. But due to that, they have to raise voltage in order to push more power through the CPU. Intel CPUs, you now know, run very, very hot. But that voltage actually kills some of the CPU. Too much current to the CPU is bad, especially at high temperatures. Sustained high current is very bad on it, which makes the CPU unstable. But in order to fix the instability, you have to raise the voltage even further, which means that this is just the downwards road to the CPU failing. And because of the higher voltages, the CPUs are failing faster than ever before on the 13th and 14th gen. The other issue why this issue occurs is that in late or in 2023, there have been some manufacturing issues from Intel's side, where some of the CPUs are affected by oxidation. Not sure why exactly, but some of the CPUs are permanently damaged because of the oxidation inside the CPUs, very fine micro level. Some of the companies and some of the SIs are reporting a failure rate of up to 50%, and some of the game servers are actually switching their whole section off from Intel to AMD because of that failure rate. On the other hand, we have some very interesting reports from Puget Systems and they have got quite a lot of flack for saying that. But Puget Bench made an article about the Intel instability issues and showed that what they have seen is actually that the CPU failure rate of the 13th and 14th gen is still not as high as the Ryzen 7000, which has raised some very interesting debates in the comment section below if we can trust Puget Systems. It doesn't matter which company it's coming from, it's the data that you can trust. You can't fake data. Data is facts. The data is showing that Puget Systems is seeing a lower failure rate of Ryzen 7000, but a higher field failure rate on some of the CPUs on 13th and 14th gen, which started to occur recently in May 2024, June and July, where we've seen the spike, where more CPUs have been instable or crashing in the field. What PugetBench is saying that this is still on track for being within, you know, the expected failure rates. It's not as bad as some of the other companies are seeing. It's because Puget System takes a very different approach from the power delivery and voltages. So they are tweaking custom settings into the BIOS, making sure that the CPU is very stable, runs at lower voltages and stable voltages and power draws. So it's cooler, 
more stable. Perhaps they're leaving some of the performance on the table, but as a creator, stability is surely more important than a couple of percent of performance. And they have shown that running the processes unlocked or Intel stock settings doesn't actually give you that much performance boost. So last night I sent a message to Matt Park from Puget Systems to actually ask a few more questions about deeper in this project and this is some of the questions and answers I got from them. So I asked why is Puget Systems still offering Intel systems for creators even though it seems as the ticking time bomb. They said so far while 14th gen in particular has seen a recent uptick in issues for us it hasn't passed the critical level. We are very much keeping an eye on it but our stance of following Intel CPU guidelines appears to be isolating the majority of our users from this issue. Companies and DIYers that don't follow the same philosophy we do, however, may have a different stance. I said, would you personally be worried building a 13th, 14th gen machine right now? They said, I would be watching this issue carefully, but it wouldn't stop me from building a machine. Since this issue is a long term and Intel is soon to issue a fix, any newly built system has a relatively low risk of encountering it before Intel's microcode update is released and following Intel's guidelines to minimize the chance of seeing problems. I wanted to ask more about the failure in the field from their graph of their publication as well. I said regarding the failure in the field mentioned in the article, does that mean instability, crashes due to CPU or other hardware or dead CPUs? Puget System says it varies quite a bit. The most common is BSOD errors, but there is a mix of other issues including the system locking up, rebooting, PCI lanes that don't work right, memory errors, no post, and even really odd issues like drivers not being able to install. In general, if any problem, large or small, is solved by replacing the CPU, we count that as a failure. I asked them point blank, should people be concerned about their 13th and 14th gen systems? They said in general, yes. We are fortunate that our stance on reliability versus performance appears to be isolating our users, but even for us, we are taking steps to reach out and work with our users to help mitigate the issues and have a plan of action for customers where this problem does come up. And I said, do you think there's anything else you see that should be mentioned, considered regarding this issue? Puget System says, we have long had the stance that reliability is more important than a bit of extra performance. And we encourage everyone to use this as an opportunity to reevaluate many of the industry's current practices. Over the years, many issues have popped up when different hardware manufacturers, be it CPU, GPU, motherboard, RAM or storage, push things beyond what is good idea. And often the consequences are not apparent for quite some time. There certainly are workloads that benefit from pushing technology to the absolute limits, but pulling back just a little bit often has a minimal impact on real world performance and can make a big difference for things like power draw and as evident by the 14th gen issue, long-term reliability as well. By the way, if you haven't seen Puget Systems article on this issue, highly recommend checking it out. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. What makes this drama even bigger is that Intel is blaming some of the board partners now for raising the voltages, even though they are the ones that have had the oxidation issue. So issue in there as well as being vague about their power delivery options and voltages and so on and intel has stated that they have a wrong microcode or there's been some issues in some of their part where the processor is actually requesting wrong voltage and wrong voltage is applied to the cpu which is on intel side and they've updated a few microcodes trying to fix the problem and voltages from their side as well. So Intel's not all good in here and they've promised an update in mid-August. But the worst bit, what the big drama has caused here is Intel's approach to this problem. Obviously as a big company, as big as Intel, I don't expect them to act any differently than we see Asus act about Asus RMA or Newegg with their problem or Gigabyte with their exploding power supplies. They all do it the same way. And this is where Honestly, I'm in the same boat as, as you. I wish someone can be as reasonable as just you and me, where you're saying, look, it was, yeah, it, there's an issue. We're going to fix it. They haven't given enough to the users how they're going to fix it. And the way they've communicated it, they've tried to retract some of the info, 
And then you can go and see Gamers Nexus video all about it, how the company is just misbehaving in terms of trying to fix the issue. So now what to do in some of the clarifications? First of all, clarifications. There seems to be no issues with the 12th gen so far. Even though I posted a poll recently where some people have said there's been some issues with 12th gen and uh, maybe that caused some confusion for you guys. I added that into there just to see if the people who are using these CPUs have had issues on the 12th gen as well, even though the issues aren't confirmed. But there's a percentage of people who have had instability on 12th gen as well, but most likely that's not because of the CPU, perhaps some other part of the PC. Interestingly, Puget Systems hasn't stopped selling Intel systems, which just tells me that the issue is still not as bad as it seems, because if you remember back when they had the Samsung SSD issue, when Samsung SSDs were kind of cooking themselves, they actually stopped providing Samsung SSDs and actually used Sabrent instead. But still, so far, they're still selling Intel systems, which is interesting case and some people might not like that. And I'd love to know how you feel about it in the comment section below. So clarification from my side, have I been ignoring the issue? No, I saw the issue developing slowly and I wanted to see more information about it and I've posted some polls about it. I'm not sure if you've been familiar with this, but it caused a lot of confusion in the latest video about the Ryzen 7950X where we compared that against Intel and that's kind of my bad side where we did use some of the open unlocked benchmarks from Intel. Now these benchmarks were actually done many 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 months ago probably the beginning of the year where this issue hasn't appeared yet and everything seemed to be fine still with the unlocked settings and I haven't retested it. So that's the issue I have now on my side where some of these benchmarks, well, all of the Intel 12, 13, 14 gen benchmarks are kind of inaccurate because the motherboard manufacturers now are saying you should apply Intel defaults. And I haven't tested them on Intel defaults, which kind of gives unfair comparison to AMD or looks like um, that AMD, you know, should be better. And AMD will look actually a little bit better uh, if I didn't apply them. In defense of unlocked or stock settings for Intel, we've seen many articles from Puget Systems as well, and I've tested as well, the difference isn't actually that much. In real creative workflows, you can see a couple of percent difference, so it would ma only make AMD a couple of percent better or Intel a couple of percent worse. I've been using Intel's 13th gen i9 for over a year year and three months what is it 15 months something like that plus now and i haven't seen any instability issues and um i'm just wondering if i got the you know lucky cpu even though it was bought in 2023 kind of during the time when it should be the issue of manufacturing and i'm not sure if my cpu is affected with it what i have also started to use is a 14th gen i7 here and i haven't had any issues with that either so the issues that everybody's talking about, I am not experiencing personally. I'm not avoiding the issue. I just want to bring some clarity. You know, all you can do is judge from my experience and some other people's experience and make your own choice up. So what is Intel doing about it and what should you do right now? First of all, what should you do if you have any of Intel's CPUs? You should update your BIOS and make sure that you have Intel's default settings applied, Intel's default stock settings applied. If you haven't updated your BIOS on Intel 12, 13, 14th gen, do it right now. I mean, right now. If you don't know how to do it, I'm actually going to release a video an hour from now when this is released, how to do it, why you should do it, going a little bit more in depth about it. But everybody should update the BIOS. And in mid August, Intel is or is saying that they're launching a new BIOS update with a new microcode that is supposed to fix this. Now, you can't fix the oxidation issue with a microcode, so we're going to have to see how that's going to play out and how many chips are actually affected by the oxidation issue. The good thing that Intel has done is extended their warranty from three years to five years. So if you have any instability issues with your CPUs, go and RMA your CPU right now and, and get a new one that seems to be the fix. And if your new one has an issue, you have still five years to actually get that fixed. For AMD, that must be such good news because they're sitting back thinking our Ryzen 9000 is going to kill it. And we're going to talk about how stable this is and everything. I'm so excited to test the Ryzen 9000. We're going to test this out as well. And my last comment is about the Ryzen 7950X 3D review. Now, the whole review was to point out uh, AMD's marketing about the 3DV cache being like the ultimate creator, content creator kind of CPU, because that's what they've been saying there. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I've been asking 
AMD for that CPU for over a year and AMD has been delaying, 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 delaying it and actually sent me a different one. They sent me a 7800X 3D, which kind of makes me wonder like, why, why are you doing this? Why are you avoiding me making content about this? You know, I'm a creator, you know what channel, what we stand for here. So I wanted to make content about that. It wasn't about putting like, showing how amazingly better Intel is, even though the video kind of now thinking about it, did show that Intel was better, but I can see how people think that I've been paid by Intel. For clarification, I haven't received a single penny from Intel. It just seems that I am using Intel devices. A couple of years ago, I was only recommending AMD because it was so much better. You can see from my channel. Now Intel seemed to be better, but now Intel is getting a drama. So it seems like I shouldn't be recommending Intel CPUs. I've been paid by AMD, by the way, previously. I've done some projects with AMD where they've been paying me. So even though it might seem that I'm bias towards one or the other. I'm not. It might seem that way just because I'm using Intel CPUs. Maybe that's why. Uh, but that is not my intent. My intent is just to provide you with the best options. My personal experience and opinion has been not as bad as what other people have seen. Perhaps that's why I've held back a little bit on the issue. Hopefully that clarifies a little bit what's going on and what you should be doing. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.